Hello everyone, Delightful here. I like the novel and the new, so today, let's see what the indie world has for me and you. Now this is Age of Wonders 4, this is obviously not an indie game, right? But it's a really good game, so I'm going to play it, right? This is a really, really good, probably among the best I've ever played, 4X RPGs with random maps, procedural generation of the environments, and treasure, and all that stuff, the, the forces you'll face. Well, in their placement, at least. You know, like, procedural monsters. I've seen a game try that. looked weird. Anyway, this is the... Not, even, not the expansion yet. It's, it is one of them. The One of the DLCs. It's Primal Fury, right? Primal Fury, not Primal Furry. <laughs> it's a little confusing, because this is the the faction with that adds the, the Goatmans and the, the Wolfmans, and they're all furry, and, and they're a druidic faction, but it's actually really good. I was thinking, I will do... I'll show off creating a faction. This is what I'm going to play, by the way. But I'll show what, what these Goatmans are all about and go through the faction creation so that way this video can be useful to people who might be intimidated by the game or just want a quick primer to get into it. So we say we we're going to do a new game. Choose your destination. I see it's very, very smooth. You should have pick your your map, right? Now you can make your own, you can edit them. So it's not just flavor here, it's these these lands here. I have a, a long going playlist of a long going campaign of almost completed. I kept meaning I want I want to win this battle, but it just keeps going on and on. This this map I, I made it large. This land here, which I'm, I'm winning in one, I can show it later if people want to see. So in this one, there are modifiers to each map, right? So all empires gain grievances against evil, so they don't like evil. They're endless fields, so it's mainly green fields. It's mainly peaceful, so fey, plan, animal types are common as opposed to demons or undead or magical beings or things like that, and it's continent shaped. Okay. A spell war in deserts. This is the one I'm going to do next. Look at that. So it's a very the spell <laughs> the spell war in desert. So it's like an astral sort of dune like setting or dark sun. Yeah. See that? Very dark sun actually. This realm long ago lost most of its water, plagued by sandstorms, yet blessed with pound bountiful and plentiful mana retaining crystals. I was seeing barren there, so barren oceans are no oceans here. They're just salt seas, right? To use a cud term dried up oceans uninhabitable desert provinces blasted by sandstorms yeah. lots of crystals though because they've got lots of mana crystals magical origins so in this case magical creatures are more common and it's a desert realm so that means wetlands are absent flat out absent forest provinces are rare arctic highland temperate and desolate provinces that's like like blasted by volcanoes and stuff are absent desert provinces as you might expect are common the vacant throne, so you can have like, this is sort of a map where a bunch of pretender kings are fighting, there's the infinite forest, and again you can make your own, regenerating infestations, megafauna. <laughs> this is the new map type with the PF, so within the Primal Fury DLC. So tempting with hostile seas, maybe later, the Deadlands, it's a tier 3 indication of how difficult it's going to be, so stronger foes and more of them. And they probably have more and more bonuses. So we have a rampant undeath here. Hmm. Curse of the undeath. So they get a bonus. No respite. Act this realm actively interferes with natural healing. So you don't heal. Yeah. You don't heal much. So that, that slows down expansion. Where you take massive casualties. I have another game going with dragons. So I'll do another playlist on focusing on it, because that's really cool too, that's the other expansion, I'll show that quickly. What is it? Dragon Dawn. That's 10 bucks, and Primal Fury is 10 bucks. They both add a lot, and I think they're they're a good deal. Anyway, new game. Choose your Don't get destination. distracted. So, a realm of my own creation. Yeah, I can just outright create one if I want. I like large. Just incentivizes rushing. At difficulty, I'll keep it normal. This is not Masters of Magic, where normal difficulty, uh, I find pretty easy. But then again, I grew up crushing that on Impossible, just using hero strategies. But in this, this, this AI is tough. Respect it, or it will crush you. Hard is hard. Brutal is, as you might expect. I want to face overwhelming odds and earn my triumph. Or be crushed. <laughs> so I can make the map size. I will also, look at this button here. This button's your friend. So I can go, how many modifiers do I want? These are the modifiers I was showing off earlier. Overgrown realms, scorched climate. So desolate provinces. That's like volcanic. Scorching heat because of, you know, volcanoes, highlands, forming realms. Is forming realms. So it's like it's like partially molten land, 
still being shaped by the giants and the dragons, right? Anyway, we're gonna do... Choose your destination. I will. I want to do... Because I, I, I have some thinking. The Crystal Dunes. And we select that. And I can customize it if I want. But no, I'll take this. I'll take the standard. Seven opponents. Large map. I can make it huge if I want. The maps are pretty big. And there's an underworld. It's a, like a mirror and plane. But it's more cavernous-like. So as opposed to like a Shadow Realm. Which is also a game, a thing in this game. Uh, yeah, Age of Wonders 2, Shadow Magic had the Shadow Realm. And then the expansion, the next one coming, I believe, is going to be like Arcane. They're going to have another Shadow Realm you can go to. This seems good. Your journey starts here. Okay, so five minutes in, we're getting to the character creator. I mean, I need to mention that stuff, but... Let me know if I'm going too fast. I tend to talk a little faster when I get excited. It's something I'm continually working on. Right? Uh, so you can be super evil if you want, yeah. Being undead, but so hmm. let's just these like the the ones in the map. So you will fight these factions, like in a game I'm running right now, the 50 hour one. Alfred is my ally. Alfred Elderstone, he's a feudal lord, right? So that's one of the how the game separates this. If you ever played Age of Wonders three, which is incredible and good as well, but this one I'd say four is even better. Three has it a very different means of of character creation of of faction selection and of customizing your factions and your wizard if you, even if you are a wizard in this because in this you can be a wizard king you can be a champion you can be a freaking dragon lord if you get the other expansion which is 100 percent worth it they're very different but it's all culture based here it's culture based and and it's, and it's broken down into physics like the the physical shape of your, your people's so Birch Folk the Hermit, he's a furry. <laughs> he is definitely, he's a goat man, that's right. So this is the new primal faction. They're pretty good. I'm gonna be them. I think that's their so if you look at the if you look at the faction, you can kinda tell what's going on here. That's their shield unit, their infantry, basic infantry. That's their support unit over there, healer, and has a one tack. That's their archer over there, has a blowgun. Big blowgun. And that's their that's their charger unit that can break blocking like the berserkers in this case. And then we get a scout back there. Whereas the Risen, they're dark primal. So you see that mammoths. Oh yeah, we can get mammoths. The verdant elves, so more more wood elf kind of sort of thing going on. Again, primal. The first elves, we have, their culture is high, right? And it's not like they like to hang out in the woods and have fun, right? That's more probably than more of these people. No, these guys are high and mighty and holy. That's actually the faction I'm using on my, my other game, yeah. I didn't upload it. But yeah, they have. They can bless high pri sun priest over there, guardians. They're pretty good. They're they're mages. They are tier four. So you'll see it's not just it's not just theming, right? The the mage here that's their tier four unit, right? And if you go to the elves, it's different, right? So the or you get sharp delineation here if we find the. Where are you? Curse of toadlings. <laughs> he had toad peoples. I'm fighting her right now, she's tough. Because she's turned her soldiers to steel and iron, so they're tough to cut through. I'm trying to I'm having to electrocute them. Or just gradually pow away. Uh, debuff them down with bleeds and uh, poisons, diseases. So they're very short. Human paladin, so again another high culture. Yeah. Devotees of good, imperialists, that's their cultural bonuses they picked. Mole folk. Mm-hmm. You can do that if you want. We got good old dwarves. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. Astral. They are the pure sage. Yeah, yeah. So they're the astral type. So you see the positions of their casters is different. Their caster is like a tier one unit. They get might magic. Might magic. They get magic much sooner, right? But they're not as strong. But it takes a while to bring tier four units onto the field. and They cost more. So this is a, this isn't just visuals. It also looks cool, but it matters. Halflings, if you like hate shoes, you really hate shoes. <laughs> Wholesome halflings. Anyway, we're gonna make our own faction. What and then is your people's form? We start as the evil and vile humans. Well, ugh, yucky creatures, never. Elf. Now, you, if you don't want to make your own faction, you can just click them. This is what the default humans get. These three traits here. So, twenty percent more XP. Faster recuperation is quite nice. So they regenerate an additional ten points. On the world map, on the world map turn, so they heal faster. That's nice. 
Defensive tactics. So this is good if you're fighting in formations, and you probably should be, usually. Plus one to defense, plus one resistance, and plus ten percent to evasion. I'll talk about this in more detail because that's a big difference between, say, Masters of Magic, which obviously inspired this game, most fantasy forexes, and the Age of Wonders series, at least three onward that I can remember. Because they handle resistances and defenses a bit differently, quite a bit differently. But I'll talk about that anyway. So they get this only when they're staying next to a friendly unit with defensive tactics, like active. So they're more defensive, good in fighting in lines. Dwarves actually get that. Hardy, more hit points. Tough, so I like tough, to defense. And then defensive tactics, again, they get that. It can be... The cat folk are already here, so you already sort of had your furry option. Rat folk, if that's what you want. Toadkin, Momans. <laughs> again, I'm not focusing too much on what it says down here, because we can change all this. This is just their form, how they're going to present. Uh, this is a sharp difference from, say, Age of Wonders 3, which you pick a race, right? You had you had, you had full, drink, bone, full blown draconians you could pick directly, which you can't do here. That's actually an evolution of your form you get here. Right? Guild Lizard Folk, which was added with the Dragon expansion. They are poisonous, which I'm going to pick on my goat folks. They're tenacious, so casualties is also a thing that was not... Oh, reduced damage on, from casualties as units lost forces was not a thing in 3, from memory. So a unit... A unit of swordsmen or whatever had dealt as much damage when they had one guy left as compared to when they had all their units, right? Whereas in this, no. Each, if, it's like Masters of Magic in that case. When you've lost a unit, they are no longer present in the field and they deal less damage. Obviously, it doesn't apply currently to big units like a big dragon or a hero unit because they are alone, right? They're, so they're not affected by that rule. In that way, Masters of Magic functions the same way. We're going to go Goat Folk. Their default thing is they can sort of eat grass. <laughs> That's funny. And they consume floor, but I actually wouldn't, wouldn't want to do that because I like the, the bonuses floor provides. It, that was not really much of a thing. In Age of Wonders 3 was a little bit of a thing in terms of like terrain that could block and stuff, but here it's much more of a focus. I think they got that from the, the sci-fi version of this they kind of did that didn't hit as well for me. I just like fantasy. But this is just pretty much how you want your character to look. Very different from 3 because the races were more set like Masters of Magic, right? You pick the human, you get the paladin, right? Eventually, if you got the cathedral up, right, in the War College. Or you could be like the Claxton and get their their beetles and their work ethic, I guess. We'll go, we'll go Goatkin. And I'm going to randomize. I'm not going to randomize those. I'm going to pick those. So, traits, right? I get, it looks like I only get three or sometimes two or some. No, I get, I can spend five points. So I want to go, uh. And then what do I want? So these are all very meaningful choices. Like I could take Goat Folk and they ride around Eagle Mounts. This would give my starting commander an Eagle Mount, so he could fly around. Assuming he didn't have a stave. I'm taking a stave, so I don't want this. But I could also start with a Mammoth and Nightmares. Yeah, gain Vicious Killer, gain Intimidating Aura, because they're Nightmares, they're evil, right? Freaking Unicorns, Elephants, Mammoths, Dread Spiders. So the Elephants and Mammoths are Juggernauts, so you can smash down walls if you want. Less useful in this, because of how Sieges work. Compared to 3, and 3 was a big deal. I'll talk about that later, thoughts on that. Like, there's all sorts of very different things you could do. Like, Bulwark, that gives you, when you go into defensive mode, slow and steady indeed. You get plus 2 defense, plus 2 resistance. Arcane focus, so all your magic just steals 15% more. That adds up. More hit points. Hmm. Oh yeah. This is sort of a Mirin option here, so you could, you could start in the underground if you want. Oh, and you start with excavation, so you can dig out tunnels in the soil. Desolation, so I'm not going to need that, but I could get that. Because my, my culture, I'll get it. Oh, my, f yeah. I'm doing my culture, I'll get it, so I don't need it in my form. Pretty much what we're choosing here are our physical benefits, right? Think like humans that are adapted to living in the cold, right? Or adapted to living in the heat, they're tall, things like that. Cold-blooded, so less likely to rout, because morale is also a thing. I know I'm going to want, I'm just showing off things people might be interested in. I want poisonous. Plus two blight resistance, that's poison damage. And I'm immune to poison. And base melee attackers who attack my shieldmen, my, my defenders, they have a 60% chance of getting poisoned. And poisoned is a, it's a dot of blight damage. It stacks to five. Four times five is 20 per turn. Obviously it doesn't work versus the ethereal. So that could be like, they're like evolved astral creatures that are like pure magic, right? They're energy beings at that point. 
But they're weak to lightning, right? Because they conduct it more, because they are of the magic. Or like an undead, obviously. But poison is really good. We're going poisonous. I like that. We'll go tough, because I like plus two defense. That's first physical attacks. In Masters of Magic, that is... Oh, I have one, one thing. I didn't take something off. Okay, yeah. Because I have five points. Two, two, and then I can take one more. It could be strong. Melee and physical damage up by two. Nah, we'll get that elsewhere. What I want, or something similar. I want elusive. So this gives me plus four defense and resistance against retaliation attacks. So when I hit, they hit back. Right, like Masters of Magic, right? But they can only do that once per turn, usually. But if you flank them, they don't get that. And then an opportunity attack. So if I'm like, opportunity attacks. So if I'm trying to run through an area, or trying to get away, to step back, there are attacks for opportunity in this, which is very good for a tactical game. I want elusive. There we go. Now it's much more to pick. What is their origin culture? What kind of culture are they? Because we, we've talked about their physical benefits. Now, how how is their society? Right. You can be feudal. You have feudal lords. We can have the lord of. It's a little. Come on. I wish we would just do that. Ugh, it's so annoying. Slow. Yeah, here we go. Feudal culture is sort of very hierarchical. Think high medieval sort of thing. Lords of war, they get knights. They get bannermen. That guy actually has a banner. It's a support character. Archers, levied troops. Eh, I'll go at some point. High. High quite good to the mage in the back. Feudal does not have the mage in the back, does he? He has a knight in the back. The cheer force a knight. And we ride boars. Battle boars. Because... <laughs> Barbarian. Now, barbarians, like, think like high, you'd think like high man from Masters of Magic or Feudal. Mm. What would Feudal be? No. Regular man, I guess. Barbarians would be the barbarians, <laughs> pretty much. Like the low man, I guess, from Masters of Magic. Their whole thing is they get draft structure. Draft is your, your income per troop, right? So, how many troops you can get per turn. Because in this game, a sharp difference between, say, Masters of Magic and Age of Wonders 3 and 4, is you can recruit and build in a city at once. You don't pick one or the other. Yeah. So barbarians, you see, they're... That's their guard unit over there. They're... Does it come later? Yeah, see, that, that's their berserker. That's their, their range unit's a javelin. They're, oh, they're, they're tier 4 units an archer. Look at that. Their scout is a mounted scout. Their support unit over there. And that's their, their shield. Primal, who I'm going to be. The primals are really cool. They're the newest one. And their whole thing, it changes depending on what their primal animal is, right? So I could be mere crocodile. And look, it changes their shield texture too. So you got a crocodile skin there. The wolf. It's like a wolf pelt. Telling spider, these start underground. So again, like a mirror and start. So they start in the underground. They can build farms on cave territory. They're like very good at farming mushrooms. The dune serpent, which is what I'm going to be. So you'll see what these guys can do. It's pretty cool. Ash, so desolation. They're like druidic, so you'll see. You see how it's changing? It's not just, oh, different color. No, no, no. They get different spirit animal, which matters. They do different damage off their boon. And there's, there's, uh, shaman, the support mages here, the druids. They have different magical attacks. Storm druids, I was testing around. Storm crow, sorry. Storm crow druid, in this case. They're all mana focused. Grasslands is their focus. Mere crocodile. It's really cool because they're immune to disease. Because I'm already immune to poison. I almost went this. And they get Swamp Walk. Pretty much the whole thing is they can turn the world to a swamp slowly. Mm -hmm. at, least, at least parts of your, around the world around your city. We're going to go them. We're going to go that way. They natural affinities, so... The, you know, like Masters of Magic, Master of Magic has, what, life, death. Oh, they do it by color, so white, black, red... Blue and green, yeah. This game has six affinities. You got nature, you have shadow, nature and dark oppose each other. You have material, which is like mining and enchanting and it, like taking magic and using magic to improve the physical world. Like you're making your flesh steel or iron or stone, right? You're making weapons hit harder. You're making ballista, you're making magical creatures, golems, things like that. Dark, which is necromancy, evil. Mystic, is sort of like the opposite of of material because their whole thing is rejecting the physical and becoming magical, becoming more mystical. See, astral projection is their scout. They use they have quick access to magic, lightning, turning themselves into like ethereal beings, things like that. It's all very different. Industrial, industrial is probably the closest thing to the dreadnought from Age of Wonders three. Yeah, 
the Commonwealth. Yeah, but I have guns. You can get guns in the other expansion, which I'll get at some point. But see, this this really matters. These matter. The culture you want matter. We're going to go primal because that's the newest one. Then I'll go Dune Serpent. So pretty much we turn our we can farm on the sands, which is pretty cool, right? I guess we're able to use our druidic powers and pull moisture through the earth up to the soil and then let's farm it. Oh, we eat bugs, a lot of bugs. And cactus. Uh -huh, our favorite terrain is sand. We get lots of gold, I guess we have <laughs> lots of glass works. From every sand province gives us two gold that we hold in our city. I think like Civ 5 cities. I get the Primal Serpent, who is physical, right? His attacks are physical as opposed to the Ash, which was fire, right? Glacial Mammoth, who does. It's all very different. I wish it would just. Yeah, frost damage off the Mammoth. Yeah, lots of frost. He charges you, but it freezes you. Oh, lots of stuff here. This, the cool thing about this is the attacks can blind for one turn. Which grants a negative 50% chance on physical and magical attacks. And no retaliation attacks, so really, really good. I want to highlight this as well. I see each faction also gives you another affinity. Order is holy, you know. Order's pretty good. I like order. Let me see how this changes. Because you get one from being the primalist, one nature, and then you can go one dune for material. Or ash serpents for fire, right? Or chaos. We're going to go dune serpents. And cast me. Anyone can ask questions if they like. But there's a lot of choices here. It's all very different. Mammoth. Dune. We're going to dune serpent because... I think it's interesting. In particular, in the world I just chose, what right? Defines their society. And what defines a society? Now we picked our society, right? Now we can further customize the society. It'll be a hermit kingdom. So this gives us a an astral affinity. So my cities will get more knowledge, food, production, and stability, but only when their domain does not border the domain of another city or out or outpost. So they're they're xenophobic, very xenophobic. Grievances inflicted by other enemies encroaching upon terrain are increased by 100%. So this would incentivize, if you think this through, me raising and destroying any cities that are adjacent to me. So a very violently xenophobic society would create to keep my bonuses, right? Which would obviously shift you towards evil pretty quickly. Because you wouldn't even, you'd need to wipe the city out. You wouldn't even want to like force all the people out and kill a bunch because that would shift your morality and still the city would be too close, right? Yeah. Ancient wise ones. So each sort of faction has their their picks. So you can be like chaos can be super evil. Ritual cannibals, for instance. You can corpse eat in battle. You just yum 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 yum. <laughs> and to heal. Temporary hit points is another thing in this game. I'll talk about that when we get to battle. Artifact hoarding. What I want to do though, we're going materium, right? I can pick any of these I want. Like, unlike say Masters of Magic you can go light and dark here right in that game you can't go life and death yeah it does life and death it doesn't do the it doesn't do colors it's heavily influenced by master by magic the gathering which was coming out in 94 as well yeah i remember playing it when masters of magic came out it was heavily influenced by the colors but i can't call it life and death but in masters of magic you couldn't have life and death you had to pick one or the other in this one you can go you can go ordering and dark if you really want you can Order and Shadow. This game merged uh, Shadow and Cold Damage, which is, you know. I'm going to Rune Smiths, though. Unit enchantments are 30% cheaper to learn, they're 30% che cheaper to maintain, and my shield units and pike units, so this guy here and that guy here, they start with one rank up, which is good. And I want, I want Wonder Architects. So I start with an Ancient Wonder cleared i just have to get my way to it to get the bonuses and they don't require population to be annexed it's just handy choose and, your first tome and then i pick my tome mm -hmm. so the tomes here are broken they're not like you select a tome masters of magic and you don't know what's what is in that specific tome right how many tomes you select determine how many picks you get right and if you pick enough you can start with more advanced spells even though you probably won't be able to maintain them maybe you could but the tomes here are really cool I like enchantment a lot. Rock's pretty good, so you see Materium has sort of a, you're taking magic to modify the natural environment. As opposed to Evolution, which is Dragon. Which is, yeah, Rapid Live Evolution. Some Environments, really good Scouts. Youthful Rejuvenation. 
double effect on units with Evolve. That's a unit that can become another unit if you make its champion rank. Pretty tough to do. Nature, so we got Treatants, things like that. Marcus Prey is really good. Wild Speaker can summon a an animal. A lot of spiders and stuff. Zeal, so order, order. Yeah, Chaplain. Chaplain's pretty good, but I did, I did that last time, so I don't want to do that again. Cryomancy, so you see that's on the shadow tier, but you can do ice damage, frost blades. Necromancy, full and necromancy if you want to do that. I could do that. Warding is quite good. Evocation, lightning. And then pyromancy, chaos, fire. And the creepy one, the horde, right? These are all tier ones. You can get there are many, many more. So this whole thing, I spawn can I can essentially shrink my people so they deal more damage. <laughs> but it's not compatible with super growth. And when you talk to the people, they'll be all tiny. Smaller and more numerous. More, more for Kund, right? <laughs> so more damage for non-heroes, and they get invasion. Evasion. That doesn't seem a nice thing to shrink your people, though, does it? Go take enchantment. And select it. What is your ruler's origin? So you get a lot of choices here. <laughs> it can be a champion. So you're just like a local person, or a local leader, resisting the invasion of the Dragon Lords and the Wizard Kings. So this gives me... 10% more gold, 10% more. It's not 10 more, it's 10% more. So this stacks quite nicely. And more st city stability, so they like you more. High stability boosts food, draft, and production. Yep, can make troops faster. All non-hero units get more XP, and then the free cities like me more. This game has a sort of Age of Wonders 5 uh, free cities sort of like thing going on, which you can win affections with them, and then they can choose to be your vassal and work under you. Yeah. They're pretty good. Or you can just conquer them. Wizard King is... You've come into this land. And they're better casters as they level up. They have over channel, so I can do that once per battle and cast twice that one turn. And more mana. Or Dragon Lord. I get extra gold with my Dragon Horde. So as I stuff, as I take artifacts from other heroes who try to kill me, or I find them out in the world, I put them in my Horde, and as they're in there, they generate gold. But he's a dragon, right? He wants his Horde always growing, so he, he wants money. And of course, it's a freaking dragon, so he can't use most items. We can wear amulets and stuff, though. Really good DLC. The dragon's really fun. Many different types. I'm gonna be Wizard King, though. That's how I roll. Reveal yourself. Yes. So, and then you can vis you can visually customize your character. Oh my, are you ready? <laughs> Lots of options here. Uh, we have. Yeah. He's a goat, so you see the, the feet. <laughs> That's a very cool Sauron-like helm, though, isn't it? Crown thing. I like it. So lots of customization is present. Oh, he's very stout. <laughs> His arms are long. Very long. Long legs, too. He's really tall. Poise. So his pose. He's, oh, he's feral, right? He's, he's inspecting the troops, right? I like the one where he's just got his weapon out. Where is it? Yeah, he's ready for battle. Another thing, don't miss this. Sword and shield. Like, what do you want him to use? Sword and shield, he's got a shield. He's kind of tanky. He's got a freaking great axe. It's all shattered. Because remember, he was banished in the Astral Realm for who knows how long. A bow, you can make him an archer. He's got a stave. I like the staves. Or he's got an orb. So don't miss that. This isn't all just cosmetic. And you can pick your banner. And then, let's say we're happy with that. Your and then, journey begins. And then you can customize a bit more. What's your title? Emperor, whatever. Earth Shaper, Earth Mother. Because I went Materium, right? Because it's what the character's all about. You can name them, what their throne city is, and then you start. Oh, that went longer than I thought, and I was pretty efficient Reveal about it. Yourself. All right, so we're going to look. Choose your first tone of magic. All right, so what we're going to do, happy your with that. Journey starts here. And we're going to use a custom faction we've already created. Oh, my dragon, here he is! Oh, he's so cool! Not yet. This is my other game I got going on. With my holy... It looks alright. And then, this is the champion of the people. He's ready. <laughs> we're going to select that faction. Now we're traveling to the realm. See? Very fun. Half hour in, the game starts. <laughs> it's necessary to go through that. So it's generating the map at this point. I did a quick little run through of this and I was pleased. So it will, will be different this time though. Yep, different map. Good. 
Let me start up. This is the primal faction, so. Delightful goat, a new ruler emerges. Explore your surrounding and expand your domain. Prepare to face your rivals and become the master of this realm. Your choices will shape the new age of wonder. So these are choices I made, as I showed you in the video. And then I get different. No, same spells. Golem's what I want. Summon copper golem. That's really good. It's an early pike unit I can just summon. Oh, to, I can use Q and E to rotate the camera. Very nice. Can't do that in Masters of Magic. No, I don't, think, I don't believe you can. I need to zoom in and out. And what we're going to do is save. Turn 1, LP, start. It begins a half hour in. <laughs> and you see, look at look out the world. It's a dust storm, very dry. Ooh, that's the... Remember, because I chose the, the faction I picked. If, you're not, if you don't remember, just go... I'm the Iron Goats, right? And I picked... Wait a minute. Wonder Architect. Yeah, I picked that. See, I picked all those things. Primal... Dune Serpent, Rune Shaper, Wonder Architects, so it's right there. That's my free starting cleared Ancient Wonder. This one gets me Storm Scale Serpents and Plague Serpents, the Rally of Lieges. So once that rolls around, once I annex this Wonder, I'll get that and I'll be able to recruit those things for a cheap cost. No way to go in and clear these. Also counts as a very good quarry, so t that is production. That's for bu buildings. Remember, draft is for building the troops. An ancient cavern that heralds from the time of this world's creation, during an era when the dragons and giants molded the very land into physical form. Within these natural sanctums, the first creatures found shelter as the world outside violently settled into place. To this day, the cave itself remains a sanctuary for those who are able to find their way to it. So I get some serpent creatures. That's pretty good. They're tier twos, plague serpents. So Blight Damage and Physical, Storm Serpent, Arcane, and Aesthetically Charged, too. Okay. Plague Serpent is just... not? Maybe he has better armor? No. Probably got the Storm Serpent, then. So let's look at our... You get these little... Very... Yeah. Civ 5 did this. Sort of prompts on the side. So I can set production in my first city. This... This... Golden color here indicates the extent of the city expansion. Current expansion. This is a this is a thing that the primal faction gets. The Dune Serpent's Den. That's my spirit creature's den, and I want to make the serpent happy, right? So I want to expand my domain and get that in. Then I'll get a quest from the serpent, which wants me to find other dens. I start with some forces here. Yeah, what Masters of Magic? You start with a settler, the new one. You start with a settler, a swordsman, and you're. That's it. Like you're not a physical unit on the field. You just live in your tower, your homebody, right? When this, no, no, you go out and do stuff. You're a unit on the field. Produce material. So we're just making money, making coins. I convert my production into gold. What I want is the woodcarver's workshop. That gets me draft. So better for producing troops. So. And production and food and makes leads to the blacksmith. Which lets me more draft income, which is what we want. Or in the stone steel, stone stealing, control production and food. So I want the woodcarver's workshop and see I can recruit units at the same time. Converts draft to food so I'll help my city grow, but I want another protector. That's my melee unit. My starting melee unit. See? Very cool. Got serpent skin shield there. And he's got a primitive axe, but effective. Elusive, poisonous, and shield defense. Look at his defense. Seven. So he gets base of 2, shield defense 3, because he has a shield, and then tough plus 2. So very physically resistant to damage. That's He takes about half physical damage. It's nice. But his you'll see his re astral resistance is none. None. So this is a concern. But when he does form up, he'll get plus 2 to both, and he'll be immune to flanking, and adjacent friendly units get plus 3. Zones of control are really important in this game. So we're going we're gonna to want more of them. So I can form my line. Yeah, I'll start with a scout in this. Master of Magic sort of starts with a scout. You get a magic spirit a few turns in from your familiar. Lightbringer. It doesn't that scream lovely and helpful. That thing's really cool. It can s convert units. Yeah. That's a threat. I want a gargoyle. I could have... If I chose a Tome of Rock, I could have had one of these guys. Or summon one. They have... They're weak to spirit. They have a charge attack, so they're a shock unit. Charges. Uh, they think like heavy... Heavy knights and that heavy charge of knights into like sh a shield wall or something, they'll breach it, right? So it cancels and knocks them out of shield wall. 
taking the defenses away from that, and it means they can't counterattack. Anyway, I want to scout, so it's best to just look at where I can scout. I can go over the mountains, or I can, but just I shouldn't, but I can. Because not mountaineers. Oh, there's a downstairs too. Can I look at it? Yeah, but not from here. So I can go into the subterranean realm, see what's there. I want to clear these guys because they're in my they have money. They all oh, they have mana stash, they're mana pickup. And they're in my way, because I'm gonna claim this terrain. If they're hostile forces on a tile, I can't work it. Usually, unless they're raiders, they won't raid it, but they're just in the way. I can't have that. Look over here. So left click to select, right click to move. This province is pretty not. I'm gonna expand to that province. Save province there. That gets me 15 to happiness for my people. They really like that that dune serpent. So my city, it's very, very druidic. <laughs> it's, it's a giant cobra. I love it. So each of the cities look very different. The factions, the cultures. So a good way to do this is to guess exploring cardinal directions at least, or ordinal. So I don't need to explore west because of the giant mountain. So I want to explore what's to the north. So my scout out. Scouts are crappy, crappy fighters. Unlike the magic spirit from from Masters of Magic, you're not going to be taking anything with this. The Masters of Magic spirit is pretty tough. You can only take a spearman. Or two. These things are crappy bow. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm using him to scout. So, a mana node up there. Flow serpents. They can astral pursue, yeah. These things are annoying to fight. Because when they're hit, they become vulnerable for that turn. They are just tedious to kill. Got an indication of something there. A tower there, I want that. It's just a watchtower. I think, um... The first game I saw those in was Heroes of My Magic 3. I don't believe the early ones had. I can get to that tower, see if I, I can sort of... Like, I'm looking on the horizon, I can kind of sort of see things. I know there's a forest there, I know there's a tower there. I'll claim that and it'll let me see a huge area, so I want to get to that. Alright, we've done my building. Oh, mana. What do I want to research? A sundering blade is what I want. Basement the attacks of my enchanted units, so this will affect these units I have. It'll affect two of my shield units, as well as the copper golem I'm going to summon. Gives a 90% chance of inflicting sundered defense. So 90% chance each attack of diminishing enemies' defense and resistance to debuffs. I want to give some demolisher too, so we won't really want that. Plunging arrows is good for stripping buffs. Oh, and it does more damage to magical creatures, right? Materium opposes magic, right? So it makes sense they would do that. So this would boost my range units, but not my mages. Spell tempered shield, resistance, so again, withstanding magical attacks. When entering defense, this unit and all adjacent units receive plus one to defense. So my shield units, we got this as well. No, we want sundering blades. And now, can I go for you? Troublesome if I lose troops, early is not good. Oh. Gas a spell. I don't have the mana to do so. Huh. Okay, that's fine. Hmm. He has the man I want. Facing this early is a bad idea. He can stay there for now. I need more troops to reliably blow him down. It's unfortunate that's what that critter is. Now, see if I'd started as a any other kind of hero beyond the staff guy, I would have a mount. But it doesn't really matter because I want to keep pace with my troops. Blinding sandstorms here. Oh. I cannot regenerate minus vision and universal camouflage. There's sandstorms going on here. Okay. Poisonous, because he's of that faction. So the stave, what the stave does is 9% chance of blinding with this thing. Deals spiritual damage. It has an attack built into it. The orb does not. And eventually you can get staves that have a lot of additional powers on them. And it keeps him from rushing in, right? You give him a sword and shield, you might rush in and lose him. It's not that bad bad or difficult to bring characters back in this. Oh, here he goes. The spirit of a desert. Investigate the apparition. You've led your iron goats. Ad Adderant follows. <laughs> Firm followers of the dune spirit to a new realm where something catches your eye. The dune spirit. Ardent. Ardent. <laughs> Not far from me, a wondrous tree pulses with invigorating energy. Its strangely familiar energy envelops you, even from afar, inspires me. It envelops me later. A faint hiss on the wind, because he's a spider, right? A snake. I don't know, it looks like spider legs in the back there. Now it's just a wasted, uh, who knows, dinosaur? Mammoth? It's a mammoth. 
your eyes fixed on the tree, you discern a faint apparition of immense power. Could it be? Is the ancestral spirit of your ancient goats? <laughs> of your ancient iron goats? The dune spirit herself? Yeah, so go to the dune spirit. Though don't just go there. You, well, they're actually telling you it's not clear. They want you to claim that territory. Oh. That's different. Because last time I played this, she didn't spawn. Now she did spawn. Okay, I guess we'll go see her then. <laughs> Previously, I couldn't talk to her until I claimed the tile. Now I guess I'll just go talk to her. That's nice. Yeah, we have to wait next turn. We can do it. <laughs> Interesting. Oh. Elder Balian Fox of the Free City is a goat folk as well. Elder Hurst acknowledges you with the ancestral greeting of the Iron Goat. So he's one of my people, so he'll have the same picks I do. Well met, Earth Shaper. He observes me. It is obvious to me you and I both follow Earth Coil, the Dune Serpent. Kin is what I shall call you. Let us not wage wars, but speak of peace. Okay. Yeah, give him a Whispering Stone. You ever play? <laughs> so, Whispering Stones are like Lord of the Rings. You ever seen the movies? Where Sauron has this thing where he talks. Well, Saruman has this thing where he talks to Sauron. That's what it is. I'm giving him a stone, he's talking to me. Because I'm like this magical entity who came from somewhere else, right? And I have these stones. Or the champion, I guess, took them from somewhere else or made them. I don't know. Aragorn could use it, I guess. But this will improve my standing with this, the free city, the independent faction. Eventually, I'll be able to vassalize them. And they'll help me. Give me resources and stuff. Can I get that? Can I just have that? Mana, yay, free pickup. So if I go into his own territory now, it'll upset him. I don't want to do that. I'll, I should get him fairly quickly. Neutral alignment, so yeah, alignment's also a thing. We got some mana though, so I want the copper golem. It's a little cheaper for me. I can put that in my army, so I can get a full stack. Yep, spell's ready, and we'll click that, and yep, cast the spell. So unlike saying Masters of Magic, where all spells go directly to your summoning circle. Here they just go to your, your hero or your city, whoever you want. It's pretty flexible. So let's go talk to the serpent. Spirits of a Desert Aftermath. When you arrive at the den, the visage of a dune serpent lured you has disappeared. Yet you hear hissing near your feet. Something seems to move through the earth. This is interesting. It's, it's very different depending on the different spirits. Like, if a storm crow or something didn't hiss at me, right? <laughs> You examine the enthralled tree and notice the sand slowly heaping up at the bottom of the trunk. Earth Coral's influence is palpable here. You recall ancient legends that promise formidable bones to the most ardent torchbearers of the Earth Coil. Claim this territory so you may build the Doom Serpent Temple. Yeah, tell me what to do. Which invokes the power of the Doom Serpent to slowly turn your domain into deserts <laughs> where you thrive and where everyone else might not. <laughs> Win the favor by securing at least three dens. So I gotta find two more of these tree things and build the temples and then build three temples she is certain to notice my devotion then so to build three temples I'm gonna need three cities right luckily that's my current cap currently I think five I think it what caps out at that's very different from say master magic which encourages the old city spam from old civilizations which has its pros and cons so I want that can I claim it yet so like Civ 5 as your population increases, you can claim more domain using people to claim a territory and settle on it. I should be scouting out another place for a city. Speaking of scouting, I can use another scout. Hey, what's your movement? It is... 40. That's a little faster. Spirit Tracker, do you have Dune Serpent's Boon. Hmm. Nah, I don't need the other scout. I want more troops. What's that? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I got a scout here. It's fine. He'll be coming back. At some point, these people will give me a quest to become more friendly with me. These guys won't attack me unless they're marauders. Like, you'll be able to tell when they're marauders. They're not going to be an issue. Oh, there's a valley I could get through here. To Oh, he's in my way to get the tower. I can come back for that, I guess. Alright. I want the... That's clear. What's over here? 
that's clear. This is iron deposit. I do want that for the just quickly. And we've given my orders. Here we go. Enter. See, very good game. He's moving. Hmm. Here we go. I can annex my first province. So I want. See, you just click that to take it. And that'll give me farm income. And the Dune Serpent's Den. So my people's. Was it fit 10? And now it should give me 15. Yeah, plus 10. There it is. So st city stability is stable. So I have that now. And now the next thing I should do is build the temple she wants. Gives me plus five mana. So it's like a sh half shrine. Starts altering terrain to sand at one province per turn. This extends to a radius equal to the city's tier. I think I'm tier one. The village. One right there, yeah. So there we go. And give me another protector, yeah. My darter units are actually pretty decent. They have a giant blowgun. They can shoot. It has crap range, but they can do a disengaging shot where they shoot and they should leap back. It's pretty good. That's so that's expanded out to there. So this city's kind of close to me. I don't want to expand too much. I'll probably never annex this city. I'll probably let them stay free. And I can just gobble up all this. Eventually expanding my domain. I want this, though. These are... Spiders are nasty. They have a frozen web they can drop on me. It can freeze me, and which just stuns me. And slows me down, less retaliation. You only get one retaliation by default, and they got, <laughs> they got gremlins. They look like a joke, right? No, no. Behind you, they can essentially force you to get flanked. They do fire damage, too. Let's put a save in. I probably won't need it, but... And we... I do have my troops here. Can I not? I can reach it. Yeah, there we go. Element of surprise. Oh, okay. I, I overpower them to such an extent, to such an extent, that they'll flee. Temperature in the immediate area rise and falls intermittently as a group of elemental beings panic. Okay, it's the elemental spider, I guess. The ice spider, seemingly the leader of the group, wavers unsteadily before you. It seems aware that engaging you would result in almost certain death, but is unwilling to abandon its group. So sort of like the old, here's my magic thing, where you could just have, if you overpowered the enemy to such an extent, they would just flee. Well, here is a morale choice. I can attack them for the XP and maybe lose a character, but also shifts my alignment towards evil. I can let them go, which gives me good points, or I can demand some mana before they go. I need the mana, sorry. Give me some power! And then they were guarding some production, which I just scored, and that just completed my woodcarver's workshop. It's why you should always have more than one thing building, particularly early game, so that excess production isn't lost. Like, I completed whatever was just there, the woodcarver's thing, and then it, it went right over to the Dune Serpent's temple. Vendor is boosted because... It, something's boosting it. Probably... I don't know, but I want it. This is going to be 10 gold per turn, which I need. Because an interesting thing about my copper golems is they don't cost mana. They cost gold. They want money. <laughs> which is pretty funny. I'm like smelting the coin down to reinforce them, I guess. Normally most astral creatures want money. Well, well, they need mana to be held here. But this is a thing. It's like I put the magic into them and just animated the copper, I guess. Sundering Blades, you want, want that really badly. It gets more expensive per unit, but unlike, say, Masters of Magic, I'm not casting this on each unit. It functions as a global, right? So we're all getting this. My Polearm gets it, my Shield unit gets it, my Fighter units is just like dragons, serpents, things like that, shock units, but not my mages. It's fine, I want that. So we're going to cast that spell. Using my casting points per turn, very Masters of Magic there, and a development skill. This is new to the Masters of Magic series. <laughs> this is, yeah, Master Magic never anything like this. This is new to Age of Wonders. But this lets me... This isn't made of aggression, by the way. This is all just for the game. This is where the affinities really matter. Because I'm a tier of affinity, right? So this is going to go up a lot faster than anything else. The general tree, which will just... That just adds everything together. And it goes up a lot faster than my nature tree, which I only have one in from my... My pick of the primal, right? The, the druid faction. So I can make it so my outpost costs less gold and take one less turn to build and start with a work camp. I'm actually going to do that because that every city starts as an outpost and heroes need to form, form cities, right? You don't you don't construct a settler like you did in Civ or Masters of Magic or anything. You just you click on the character and I can claim. But I can't do it because it's an occupied area. And the outpost should be cheaper now. 
I don't want it here. That would not be a good move. Not a good move at all because that's too close to my... I could put it here. I don't want to. Because this will all eventually be mine. I want to put it onto an area I couldn't reach. But we can turn even more things to desert. I learned Sundering Blade. Yeah, I did because I was trying to cast it. Conjure the Primal Serpent. Yeah, I want that. So I can summon this into battle. It's a tier 2 serpent. It's good. I can also re-roll. Spending mana, I don't want to do that. But I could. Let's scout. Let's see what's over here. Now, how much the sheep are going to like the desert lands I'm creating, but we'll see. Mana? Yeah. The scout can get the mana. Mm. You're still... I don't need him just yet. Hmm. Yeah, I don't... I don't think he's in this province. Like, I'm thinking I can get this next turn. No, when do I expand next? Three turns. Ah, he is a problem, though. Yeah, I'll kill him next turn, because I should have my enchantment up by then. I just don't want to lose anybody. I might lose a troop or something. We'll see. But he's guarding a mana pickup. Like, if I, if I take him, right, if I lose a pikeman, I lose one of my copper golems, and that's probably just enough mana to replace the golem while I just get rid of him. Let's cast this. So I like how we do magic casting here. Grants base melee attacks of enchanted units. 90% chance to weaken their armor. So they're going to enchant it and watch. Now my tip glows. <laughs> See how happy he is. <laughs> Very good. So that made my melee units a lot more effective. And I want another one. See them playing the... Well, this is gold cost. Yeah, gold upkeep anyway. Unit upkeep. I need more mana. Oh, my unit's ready. My trooper. I'll stand him here. So this game does the sort of master's, oh, Age of Wonders 4 thing. <laughs> yeah, Age of Wonders 4 does the Age of Wonders 4 thing. It sort of does the Age of Wonders 3 thing, where it'll pull up to three adjacent hexes in the battle. Age of Wonders 3, though, pulled six, so the battles could become obscenely large. Here, they're a bit more manageable. That's very different from how Master's Magic does it, where you have uh, nine. It's capped at nine. So more a series of smaller battles. Save because this. And can you attack me? Yes, you can. And see, it pulls the adjacent tile. We're going to do manual. I don't really do auto battles. This is like a scout that has like no chance. And entering combat. Attacking the Marauder Guard. I am. I have to be very careful. That's the symbol there. As you play, you'll get used to the symbols. The fist means. The fist means charger. It means. Shock unit. Yeah, so cavalry. Or berserker, or something like that. What that means is they can punch through your, your shield block positions and then turn off, essentially, your ability to counterattack. And then also takes away the ability, the bonus you get off guarding. So these guys are good for break, breaking in. They're going to attack me. They're going to charge. So you click on him. He can reach to here, right? So I wanted to stay here, actually. I want to form a line here, indeed. And the other reason is because these guys are ma mages. Battle mages are super dangerous. Because they all, all of them have like a special ability they can do. This one can steal a unit from me. Almost guaranteed chance of that working. And he can also pelt me three times with magic damage. Remember, we're not very resistant to that. So I want to force him to move, come to me. By forcing him to come to me, he uses up his wound points, and he might get like one attack, as opposed to three. I'll send my animus over. My glorious leader here. See, we started over these positions over here. My primal darters and... Can I reach? So I, I feel comfortable getting to this position here. And then when they guard, see they'll go into defensive mode. They went into defensive mode and they just got like a little bonus, right? Or is this guy guards? Watch this. Because he has a shield defensive bonus. He gives that defensive bonus from the shield wall to all adjacent units. So sh shielding units are super powerful and this positioning is massively important in this game. And then you can just... Uh, I'll do this. I will spiritual heal somebody. They don't need the healing, but I want to do it for the rising fury stacks. My spiritual boom. See it there? So at five stacks, they get a fury of the doom. So that means all their attacks are going to have a chance to blind, which is really, really good. Oh, yeah, Sundering Blades. So the magic blade is his desert sort of cobbled together axe thing is glowing. That's an effective shield. I wouldn't really want to use that weapon, but the shield's all right. Yeah, it's better than nothing. And they'll charge in. You can right-click to make it move faster. Alright, so they didn't go as far as they'd like. They're trying to bait me in. Look at that. 
that's not just it's sharp so if i walk through that you might bleed you will bleed in fact unless you're like undead and immune to bleeding right which is a thing or like a spectral being which you don't burn that's my over channel so i could do that to cast two spells a turn if i want i only have one spell so no he can go pretty far so he's gonna charge next turn so i should just form up a line to close that off so he can't reach me at least And I'm happy with that, so guard, give us the shield. And then they will automatically guard, so don't go through all of them. Combat's pretty snappy once you get familiar with it. Alright, he's going to try to... He took my troop. That's fine. They are replaceable. He went through, went to my... No! Troopers, no! That's unfortunate. It's fine. As you see, they flew behind. And they shut down my archers, but they it did they? Because I have this disengaging shot, I can fire. And they should disengage. I don't think they'll be able to disengage though, because they're adjacent. Instead they'll just counterattack. Oh, they took some damage. No, the move to Can I move? Yeah, so you see I'm not getting the red, because they already did their counterattack, they have one. I need to pin this guy down, kill him. Sundry defenses, so his armor is now <laughs> negative one. <laughs> And I can move away. I can bonk this guy off my... Oh, I can just hit him, right? Because I turned off his ability to flank. By triggering... And I was blinded. So go here and finish the gargoyles. Smash him. And he's flanking too. On bad shot, you can't hit your own guys. So be careful. I don't know if these guys will... If the effect lasts until the end of combat. I think if I just don't attack him, I'll just guard and hopefully he won't attack to here. And it seems fine. I don't need to use mana. Like, if I kill this guy and kill everyone else, I don't think he'll still sit. I don't think I'll keep him. I think it's... No! Jerk. Lost my archers. It's fine. It's fine. I'll take it. See, so yeah, once I kill, I shoot my troop back. I did! Yay! Finish him. So there was a casualty, that's fine. I'll have to build another one. See, so he's dead. Could've been worse. And we got some mana. So we're going to replace that unit we lost. Primal Darter, it's pretty good. And now I have a clear path to claiming... Well, this province is good. Mana... Well... Production for building up buildings. Which means faster progression and money for paying more troops. There. Like, I've already claimed that, right? So I don't need him to do that. 50 mana, that's enough for another spearman in the deserts. Produce the protector, yes, I did. Another copper golem, let's call him a corpse golem. That's something. Oof. It's probably in here. I see first battle, pretty good. No one the first battle sooner, but that was a nasty little group early. So this is clear. I produced the Dune Serpent Temple. Very nice. That makes them happy. The storage house is, leads to the granary. Money is library for re research income. That drives my spell progression. Smith gives me more draft. Hmm. I want my income. I need more. Yeah. Storehouse. I go for a storehouse to speed up my city growth, and then the, the shrine after that. Anything good over here? Remember, on this map we have a lot of dunes, so a lot of... There should be stuff out here, right? Yeah, there's, there's mana out here, so the, it's like mana pickers are plentiful, so there's gonna be lots of mana. I'm gonna be turning all this to desert, every, everything in my domain. What's over here? I need to be scouting out a second location for a city, too. NPC army of Marauder Guards guarding a cache of mana. I don't really deal with them right now. Not really. Hero cap is one of one. I can speed that up. It's going to increase soon. Three turns now. Not four turns now. Okay. I can annex another province. So we don't want this one. We definitely want this one. Because this will connect to Lobs Hollow. That where I can build farms in the desert. I can build a mine, so the mine will give me... Ooh, there's iron here too, so the mine gives me five more to gold. 
and a quarry. We'll do a quarry. See? And that that's a very effective province. There's two things on it. So then, if you, you're curious what you have in the city, you have... I'm curious what you think of... I have a farm there. I don't have a farm. I have a quarry. Is that kind of a farm? Oh, yeah, I put a farm there. That's all I could. Okay, so I have one farm and one quarry. I want to claim... Oh, I can claim it. Remember, because I can claim it for free. There we go. I get it. <laughs> it's a shape, isn't it? Look at a flower. Pretty cool. But yeah, that gives me a lot more production. So look at that. A lot more. 94 on the turn of map now, which is really, really high. What freaking turn is this? <laughs> turn 7. <laughs> That's a massive amount. Of, we're going to power through this. And the shrine is boosted as well. We'll give me a shrine. More mana. And... Library, I guess, yeah. That's a lot of production. I mean, I could kill you. It's, it's XP. Wind barriers that are hard to shoot. Physical and magical range attacks. Just just regular shock, you know, otherwise. So you can see the types here. Elemental. Elementals are immune to bleeding, poison, and disease. He is a fly. Oh, he evolves. Okay. He floats. He is of magical origin, and he's shock unit, so he's punching through good punching through shields. I do want to know what's over here, but that's not a good use of my hero, my ruler. Scouting out another location is really what I need to be doing. You're over here looking. Oh, I probably need another scout, actually. This is pretty far. Ooh, here we go. So the good sea locations might be a bit limited. Hmm. Okay. In that case, I will make another spirit tracker. There could be something down there. I don't know if the great desert descends to this, you know, under the earth. Maybe. Infernal puppies, fighting units, and tier one mage. Waste them. Man, if nothing else. And it is a node, so I mean, I don't know if I, I don't think I built the stages for this. I wouldn't. There's no rare resources or anything like that, like mithril or this game doesn't have mithril or bantium. It has other stuff. Skeletal mages, so mage, shock. They're gonna rush in. See those trees? They're not just like providing cover, right? They also give you obscured if you're in that location. It becomes 40% harder to hit with ranged attacks, so it's really, really good. The rock, of course, blocks enemies. How far can you hit, mage? What do you do? It's a tier one mage. He only, he only has one little pew pew pew. Blight and cold damage. Okay. So we'll go into the high foliage. The cover here. Watch out for <laughs> spikes, right? I don't see any cacti around. Put you here. I'm going to buff him. He doesn't need the healing, but the rising fury. Two more hit. Like every time he hits, he builds that. And if he builds up to five. He gets the Fury of the Dune Serpent ability, which lets all his attacks deal more damage and can blind. Oh, guaranteed affliction of blind, not even a roll, which is really, really good. My Copper Golems are... what's that? Is that obscuring you? Okay. I'll put me up here and then heal the... Regeneration for three turns as well is really good. And that seems good. And they'll push forward. He has a charging unit. He will definitely push forward. Yep, knocking me out of... Retaliation in defensive mode. Look at two shots. One he missed. Poison. He's poison. I'm burning though, so a little bit of trade. Alright. Don't attack with him. He's going to die. If I do. And do I have... Yeah, I'll cast Ancestral Harmony. 15 temporary hit points. If Fury of the Thing is active, he heals double. Is it? It is not. It could be though. I probably should actually heal after for him. I can actually cast twice. Mm. You can get to here and go for a flank, so do it. So he won't get a retaliation attack, he'll slender his armor quite a bit. And then you can get up to here. Send on fence, send on fence, very good. You have a shot. 50, 50, and five, don't take it. <laughs> you can get rising very two off that. 
There's no point guarding because he'll just break the guard. Yeah, he should. I'll just heal him. All right, good. Nice effect there. And I can go, you know what? We get double healing. Because I don't want to lose more troops. Close that once a turn. Once a combat. And you can swing around, huh? I'll stop thinking about pushing to him, but now I only get one attack. And he's in cover, so it's fine. That flank looks really nice. Protector is luck. And I have an attack. Waste him. Very nice. Probably should have done that sooner. So turn, turn, the order in which you take your unit's turn really does matter. So you blast them. Flanking attack, kill a few of them. So if they were to attack, they deal less damage. Because there are fewer units left. Look at poison though, which is pretty nasty. There we go, easy. The dot killed him. To there. Get out of that fire. So all the debuffs on him, he's pinned. Well, he was pinned. Burning. Two stacks of burning. That blue bar there is temporary hit points. So that means after the battle, he goes back to the full number there. That's a big change from, say, Age Wonders 3, where you want to get into fights, short little fights, and drag them out just so you can combat, cast, heal, and heal up your troops. It was exploitable. Make a rid of it. Now healing is like temporary healing. Right? So you want to try, try to avoid taking hits if you can. Otherwise, you have to take units back and heal them. It also makes regeneration very valuable. 41 mana, that's not much. But the threat is removed. Oh, he was just a mana pickup, not even resources. Hmm. What's that? Iron. I don't think I'd stretch that far. There could be something, another city around there. So, sort of city radius like area. More golems. Yeah, I will summon the golems. Come use them. Go pick that up. Go get it, golems. 48 mana. Alright. It's over here. Yeah, send the golem into the desert. See, we're all injured a bit. And we'll heal very slowly. We want to get back to our territory to heal at a reasonable rate. I leveled up. So this is an RPG, I told you, right? It's not just my cities level up, which, you know, in some ways, your city is a character. Because, you know, they get more developed, they get stronger by being able to build more resources, generating more gold, pump out more troops. But also the heroes are as well. Your rulers. And also... The units level up as well. Little ones, like little bonuses. So one more XP, you get six more hit points. That's nice, right? It's not bad. And then as it as they really get up, they'll get better resistances and stuff. The exciting units are the ones who evolve when they level like this guy here. He's gonna turn to a bronze golem. He's gonna get a material upgrade, right? <laughs> he goes from copper to bronze. Which, he has, he's a tier 3, he deals more damage, so 4 more damage. He has a weakening cleave. Oh, is he a cavalry type? Yeah, he might be a cavalry type, that's cool. He gets an elite metal, so you do kind of want to try to keep your units alive. To the extent you can. I... I can afford another copper golem, yeah. I'll have him explore out to there. Which means, if I'm comfortable using those guys that way... You are not needed, Mr. Scout. I will then take the Primal Daughter. Be more useful to fight, too. Unknown ruler. It's a very different look to the game, with the obvious desert everywhere. Negotiation succeeded. Okay, so, by giving him my... my palance here, my orb, he opened his borders to me so now I can travel through him. I can trade with him. Previously, if I traveled through his train, it would upset him. Because we didn't have an open borders agreement, now he opened his borders to me. And magical materials can be traded, and next up it's going to go to Pact of Loyalty. I can boost this up by spending Imperium. I don't want to, I want to bank it. Although now, I want to send someone to go scout that. We've got the vendor. Some more money per turn, very good. And my other troopers produced. I suppose. Hmm. Were you always there? Oh, it's the NPC Army of Elder Hurst. Those are his troops. He's holding that. That's right, fine. He won't attack me. I wanted to go over here. 
and boost up that force. Okay. Protector, I can summon another copper golem. Do I want him? Well, let's first see what's over here. Reveal the mists. Let's see. Oh, mists, I should mention that. That's another tome that was added in this. Fey mists, it's really fun. I create mists everywhere, it gives you units obscuring. <laughs> but you can see through the mist. They don't know that. When you're fighting anyway, right? Uh, those guys. Yeah, so it's a lot of desert and patches of not desert. What's that? Ooh, a silver wonder. So they're copper, silver, and gold. I started with the e copper one. Plus two knowledge. See, I have a rally. So when this occurs, I'll be able to recruit a sort of serpent unit for cheap. And also I'll be able to get it from my my city as well as aligned with me. But this one, this is a blessed soul I can add to the Rally of Legions, assuming once I take it and annex it, it counts as a conduit, so mana. 25 mana with that. And Imperium. And knowledge for research posts. So this is a good city location, and it's by this. There's something here. Something significant. Now, for I can't summon to just a regular scout unit. That'd be a bit much. Make scouts very, very potent. No, I have to summon to a to a hero or a city, which is fair. I'll put you here, because it's a full stack. He's going to be there, so part of stack two. And then we'll explore up to there. Do I want another one? Yeah, I can afford it, because it's gold to maintain these guys, not mana. So it's fascinating that the Materium actually needs less mana. I mean, yeah, I use mana to summon them, but to, to animate the copper, right? Shape it. But gold to maintain them. Imagine like they're eating the gold. Well, in this case, copper coins. Mmm, this gives me a combat summon. Nice. Plunging arrows would be nice. Serpent primal commune. So this would give my non-culture units. So this would give my copper golems the ability to get dune serpents boom. Oh, and they'd also get sandlock too. Yeah, that speeds up everything. We'll do that. It might benefit me too. I want that. New Empire Development skill, so tier 2. I already took the better outpost, the cheaper to make. City structures cost less gold. Hmm, tempting. I'm not going to need embarking, because there's no water on this map. It's it's a sand dune, right? So in this case, city structures cost less gold to build. 60, right? Okay. 20% less. Where is it? 48? Yeah, so there's a little cheaper. 15 in mana. Oh, actually, blacksmith. Armory for draft. Yeah, I can get more troops quicker. More mana. Go for the blacksmith. Then that. There's, mm, library is 3. We'll go 2. Yeah. I produced the storehouse, so that'll increase my production, my, my people gain. I meant way <laughs> increase my production of people, right? I don't directly produce the people. I produce the food, which feeds the people and thus incentivizes them to make more people, right? A roundabout way of doing it, but I do it. Yeah, that makes sense. Primal darter. So you see how much faster my my production is as composed to draft, and why these it matters a lot. These are, these are separate. I want to check that out. I want to see what's over here. Then I need to see what's down. Pilgrim's Passage. That's pretty cool. Okay, there's a hostile spawning thing over there. They will come and raid you. They are a threat. I need to see what is. Hmm. I don't want to send a small force up to those areas. There'll be something there. Just summon another golem here. Let's see what's. Yeah, it's definitely something. Yeah, okay, iron. Iron's good. I like iron. And mana. Tier 1 mage is not a threat. Just waste them. Spirit Hawk. Okay. Big like Spring Hawk from Dominion 6. Those things are terrifying. Ethereal. Lightning damage units that can just take down a super combatant. They'll just swarm you and shock you to pieces unless you have like a, a ring of shock resistance on. Easy way to kill a pretender. <laughs> Infernal puppy. Oh, that's so cute. Immune to burning. Oh, they want to flee. As your troops engage the group of fiends, <laughs> the infernal puppy, right? It becomes apparent they have conjured, they are conjuring a portal to withdraw. 
the infernal puppy, the apparent leader of the gathering, casts a shrewd eye over your army. Just imagine his eyebrows and they're uh, descending. <laughs> Seeing there is scant hope for survival, it beckons its own troops to sit on the ground and submit before following suit. It washes you with wary hope. So I can bind him to me. I can get a free unit. For a lot. Kill them all. <laughs> yeah. Killing fiends. I mean... Okay. Maybe they're not evil fiends. Fiends aren't always evil in this. Fiends are just in D&D &D sense. They're just evil outsiders. I can spare him. Be gone, fiends, and do not return. Or bind him to me. Yeah, I'll pay. It's expensive. Oh, and I get their treasures as well. Melee attackers have a 60% chance of getting despair. It's pretty good. And more production. This unit loses morale for the end of its turn. Another unit. I mean, that was expensive for a unit, but it's a, sh a shock unit I otherwise don't have access to, so I'll take it. And he's fast. Good scout for me. I produced the shrine. Yeah, instantly, because, see, I'm getting all extra production. Got some more mana coming in. In the market? I kind of need the gold, don't I? Uh, for a library. <laughs> Sorry. So this game mainly handles uh, progression on units as you build the town halls. And that lets you unlock tier 2 units, right? Normally you can build tier 1 units in a city, right? That's you, normally your shield unit, your scout unit, and your archer. And tier 2 is you have your support troop and your charger normally. And tier 3 you have your mages normally. Probably on this faction as well. And then tier 4 is usually... It might be cavalry or it might be mage in the case of the, the, holy fa the, the high faction. I really need another city. Just city locations are not super common on this map. Which is if it's, right? It makes sense. <laughs> Alright, what's down here? Not much. This is all just like effectively like dried up sea, and I'm just exploring the seabed, the sea floor. Just nothing. Although, with my faction, I could just build a city out in the middle of nowhere and then just get gold off it. Because this thing is turning things to desert. Where it should be. Yeah, where is it? No, the temple does that. A temple I've already built. I assign a governor. Provinces. Structures. Yeah, so if you go click here, the gears, and then go to structures, you can see we've already built in the city. There's no sort of master of magic like City Viewer. You, can, you can't always tell. Like, you can take a look and see if the there's a stone wall or a palisade or there's a wizard tower, but you can't like, get the master of magic like level look. Dune Serpent Temple, yeah. Extends to a radius equal to the tier, so tier 1 still. Okay. Right, you're my scout now, demon puppy. Go through the jungle and tell me what you see. He sees nothing. Hmm. And that looks like something. That, that looks like something. Already here, and I'll need my. I'll need to be around to found the city. Blinding sandstorm, yeah. Blinding sandstorm in combat, yep. Yeah. Oh, at the end of combat, in one turn, six percent chance of you suffering blind. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> nasty. That iron alone is not worth a city. Particularly as I might be able to reach it with my city. Got to be more. In this desolate land. I can annex on the province. Yeah, so this will shape which way I want to go. I'm tempted to go for the the forester before I c uh, turn everything into desert. So because the the armory requires two foresters, so I want to do that before everything is desert. And I can't build the forest anymore. So I can only build a forest where there are in fact forest tiles, right? If I were to build there, I wouldn't be able to occupy. Wouldn't be able to pull anything from it because it's occupied. I could push to there for the mana? No, we need the, the forest tiles. So I want the forester gives me food and production. The mine just gives you, well, the quarry gives you production. The the farm will give you food. I'm getting sand to the soil here, the sand. I'm getting currency from the soil. Yeah, I'm getting gold from the sand because of my faction. Normally you wouldn't get that, right? And there's no mine option there because there's no like, here we go, there's gold here. I could... Mm, tempting, but no, I need this. This is the smarter play, get the forester. And I can grab a forester here, then I'll have two by the time everything turns into a desert. So they'll just keep a few trees around. Alright, what's in here? I can go over these mountains, right? 
Aha, the cursed barrow is here. Tranquil Pond. So this is a, a, a rare item. Rare Larissa. You might know that name as she's the sorceress from Age of Wonders 3. Rare wonders to the world. These pools are said to be the liquefaction of the collective wisdom of the people who've walked the land. So Druidic stuff, right? It's the spring at the center of the great forest, but the, the forest has receded, right? It's all turned to desert. Ooh, a tower. Those who spend time gazing into the tranquil waters experience clarity of thought like none before. So this gives me research. I want this. This is a good city location. I also get the cursed barrow. So here we go. This is the way to go. I can clear that with my forces. A resource pickup is worth it. We can handle that, and then we can get to the send my my wolf puppy here. Oh, you do evolve. You do. You evolve into the infernal hound. So a hellhound. Very nice. You are checking stuff out for me to the south. Well, that mountain. He's not a very good scout, but he's he was you know didn't cost that much. Let's see this here. Primal Darter, and I only want one of them, I think. Yeah, seems good. So your time just flies playing this game, though. It's really good. Another troop. Yeah, pikemen are really cool. I want another one. All right, we're going there. Scout, what do you see for me? Yeah, okay. Ooh, more mana. It did say mana was plentiful. So this is a monster den. These are the guys that will come and get you. Oh. I don't even know. Oh god, he's a mythic tier unit. So really strong. Tier 5. He's a juggernaut. He looks like a demon. Looks like a Hezrezu. A furry Hezrezu. Short Hezrezu. He's a charger, so he smashes through shield walls. Bone shattering howl. So I'm not going to be able to deal with this guy for a while, I don't think. So he hits our morale, but he has to do it. He's not nasty as a dragon. Terrifying gorging, so he'll just eat your units and then heal off it like an epic tier dragon can do that It's a juggernaut so it smashes the walls Has 11 status effect resistance. It is it's manageable for a mythic. It's not that bad but He's nasty Yeah Monster infestation the crunch of half-chewed bones and a foot in the overwhelming scent of past victims drifts to the air Marking this den a home of monsters from ancient giants shape those of the world the vicious trolls still sense that the loss of their deep domains one might expect any type of powerful creature and the minions to emerge yes yeah, so this thing is a gold infestation spawn these things are nasty it's gonna send out waves of just stuff my way is a th it's my biggest threat currently and I cannot handle it currently not yet that's fine anyway this is a good break point I think I'm gonna play some more just you know I have to break up these videos otherwise they become a bit too Unwieldy in three hours have passed and I'm uploading a three-hour video, which is more Anyway, this is age of wonders Four primal fury. I'm gonna play some more just gotta You know manage the video size Anyway, thanks for watching like subscribe